it's weird. It's weird to be in a wood without a green screen behind me faking anything that's background or anything like that. Hi, I'm Mike from Scoutadelic and I'm outside because it's been over a year since I last met a physical co-host. So my last filming was March 2020 and I've come all the way to York to meet my 66th co-host in the woods because we're going to talk about nature and the environment and all that. But I'm in York so I kind of need myself a co-host. So who is my co-host going to be this month that I get to meet face to face? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Hi, I'm James. Oh God, what is it? Hi, I'm James. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm James. I'm a scout leader at West Thorpe Scout Group and this is my 60 second scouter. Uh, what got you into geography? So well I always did geography in school, I had some fantastic teachers and just found it really interesting to learn about the world around us. What's the best camp you've been on? I really enjoyed a camp we did uh, down at Torquay, it was by the seaside and we had great views and it was, uh, when I was a scout um, we did loads of great stuff, uh, stuff that I'd never done before and just really enjoyed it. What's the best skill you've learned in scouting? Uh, I think Communication skills are really important, just working as part of the team and being able to talk to other people. I've been able to take that into uh, the education that I do and, and the work as well. Favourite colour? Blue. What should scouts do to help the environment? Just thinking about the impact that you have with every action you take is, is really important and then that can cascade through all your different actions that you, you do every day. Uh, what's your favourite food? Love a fish pie. How did you start in scouting? I think I did a traditional sort of start in scouting. I started in beavers when I was six and have just carried on through the sections and enjoyed it so much I've come back as a leader. Thanks to the people on Instagram who obviously posed questions to James here. So if you're not subscribed to our Instagram, go check it out. Otherwise, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. It's weird. It's weird to be in a wood without a green screen behind me faking anything that's background or anything like that so it is it is quite nice yeah um, so it's part of the show where you show me or teach us something scouty skill wise so what are you going to teach us so following on from our theme about the environment and, and geography etc this week yeah. we're going to be looking at how we can help our invertebrate invertebrate friends. Ooh, um, okay. So they are insects in the world. It's really important to have these um, and to help them today we're going to be making a few different kinds of bug hotels. Oh, nice. Insects okay. though, just want to talk about them because they're All fantastic. Right. Yeah, we yeah. have around, we estimate, that we've discovered so far, 900,000 different kind of insect species wow. in the world. Okay. We reckon there's anywhere between 2 to 30 million more out there that we haven't found. So that makes them the largest group of animal life forms making up about 80% of all life so it's really important and with humans coming we still have lovely places like this woodland here with us going and building everywhere we are making less and less space for our insects so anything we can do to help them uh, they're going to really appreciate so we're going to do that through building some bug hotels nice okay so what um so you said a couple of uh, bug hotels so what are we going to need for our first one uh, so for our first one, we are going to be just using natural materials from outside the woods. Um, you can come to a place like like a woodland like we're in today. Um, you can probably get stuff if you've got a garden, um, a recreation ground, anything outdoorsy with a few plants around uh, and some debris on the floor will be really useful. You don't need any other equipment for this first one. So what do we need to start with? What, what things do we need to gather? So we're just going to have a wander around here now. We're going to have a look at just bits and bobs on the, the floor. Um, we're going to look for some large pieces of wood or something like that to start with to make our frame and then just any bits of vegetation anything that's going to biodegrade anything natural that we can just stuff in there okay. uh, that's going to make a nice home for, for our bugs um, obviously the smaller we make it and the more compact the smaller the bugs we're going to get like wood lice and flies and all that kind of stuff right. anything bigger we might get some bees we might get some ladybirds something like that oh, so nice. obviously okay. 
the, the bigger you make this, the bigger the bugs you're going to get. The smaller the stuff, the smaller the bugs you're going to get. But whatever's around, we're just going to go and have a look and see what we can find here. Cool. All right, let's go. Right, okay. So we've gathered um, different variations of sticks. Um, so we've obviously big, big sticks, medium sticks and tiny little sticks okay so this is a natural one so what do we what do we need to do this how do, how do we make one um so there's no real set structure we're going to teach you just um sort of a way to do it by building up um in layers um and, right. but essentially just making even just a pile of sticks is something that insects can can live in um, right. but we're going to do a slightly more structured one and um, we're going to start with our big sticks and we're going to make a square out of them okay um, so, so square okay Bit like, bit like that? Yes, exactly, yeah. Right. Um, and you can make it as big or as small as you want. I'm just going to bring ours in a little bit just because we're uh, not going to make a full size one today. Right, um, okay. But essentially, we're going to start with a square and then um, you can just build up layers upon layers by, by doing that. So we're going to start right. with maybe some, you can, uh, yep, yeah, yeah. another, pop another load on there. And there you can see we've got our sort of first layer of our hotel. Right. Um, in between those two layers, we can then just start putting. Um, some yeah, sticks there, so we're going to make right, like, okay. uh, if you imagine it like this is a hotel floor, so this is our first floor um, <laughs> okay. of there. So we want to make the first one um, fairly easy for bugs to get to from the from the bottom. Right. Um, so we're going to leave a few small gaps in there, right, okay. um, but we're just going to thread these sticks through uh, until we've sort of made a full floor. Okay. So it's always going to be this one way rather than like that this. way, and then as we go up, we can do it that way. So we can uh, sort of make, we're making a grid as we go. Right. Up, oh, right. Okay. Um, right. So. We've probably got enough there just to hold a structure, so yeah, we can do exactly that now. Right. And just start popping some along the counter. Okay. Um, and it doesn't have to be necessarily sticks you've got. If you're doing this in a garden, you can use plant stems, for example, as well. Um, if you're doing some of your gardening. Oh, um, okay. For, for, for the bottom, for the top, you can also use, if you've got old roof tiles or smash bits of uh, plant pots or something, that works quite well. Um, it's just something to give them a bit of a safe haven, really. Nice, okay. And you, and you get the general idea of what we're trying to do here. We then put, if we were carrying on, um, we then put our next sort of layer on there with our big sticks and we do the same thing. Ah, so we can build right, across. okay, and then you do that. Exactly, right, okay. and eventually you're going to build it up to a, to a height um, that you've got multiple layers of, of bugs on there. What, we, what we've also got is we've got some moss here. That's really good um, oh, nice. so they can use okay. this to, to hide in. Um, right. the, the smaller insects might decompose this and eat it as well. Um, so all we can do with this is we can either just layer it on top or we can stuff it in there as well in between our layers. Right, um, is, is it, so, so are you looking at wet or dry sticks or, you know, what, what are you... What are you aiming for when you're building this? So again, it all depends on the kind of insects we want. Because we're in a forest floor here, um, and there's lots of ground insects that we're trying to attract, yeah. damp stuff will do really well for those smaller smaller insects. They like darker, damper places. If you're trying to attract some of our larger insect friends, like uh, the bees, the ladybirds, yeah. they won't survive if they're sopping wet with loads of um, sort of wet vegetation. So we're looking for drier right. kind of stuff with them. Right, okay. Um, so that might not be something that, that's here in the forest floor. That might be a if you're aiming for your garden, you might have some of those uh, larger insects that like drier places, but for the forest floor, we're looking at wetter stuff here. Right, okay, cool. So we'll just layer this on top, we'll do a bit of stuffing as well. The main thing about these is they don't need to be neat, they don't need to look really uniform. Right. The, messier they are, the messier they are, the more little nooks and crannies you give insects to get into, right. the more we can okay. attract to it. Brilliant. Um, and this moss, if we're also popping it over the top as well, might act as a little bit of a roof as well. Mm. Um, so if it rains, we're not going to wash all our insects away. Right. Um, we've got something there. We could also build that with wood. We could just make a full layer over the top like that, right. just to case it in and stop all that rain getting in. And okay. we, we do build that up a few times. Um, yeah. But that, in its basics, you could build it up as high as you want, is, is a bug hotel um, really? made of natural resources. Okay. Main thing to remember with this though is where you're putting it. Obviously we've just come to this bit of the forest here. Yeah. You don't want to be putting it in the middle of a footpath, you don't want to be putting it where humans are going to think what, what, what yeah, earth is this. It, and yeah. Picking yeah. it over or dogs might be sniffing at it and, and mm -hmm. picking up sticks from it. So you want to put it in a nice quiet place where you know nothing's going to, going to get to it. But in its basic form, that is a bug hotel. Perfect. So you said there was a few different ones. So if we've done this as a natural one, what's the next one that we can obviously make? The next one we're going to use is um, is very easy. We're going to get some old toilet rolls. Okay. Um, and we're going to get those. So you need toilet rolls and some string and some scissors. And then again, whatever natural resources uh, or vegetation is around you. We can use moss again. We can use little sticks. Um, so we're going to go and get our materials. We're going to get some little sticks and see how we make one of those. Cool. All right. Oh, 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 dear me. 
So this one, like we said, we're using some toilet paper rolls here uh, okay. that are empty. Um, we're using some string and we've just got ourselves um, some smaller um, twigs and, and sort of sticks like that. Um, okay. This is a really easy one. This might, um, if you use your, your bigger sticks and your drier sticks here, this might attract some of our, our bigger insect friends. Oh, so we might right, have some okay. bees, we might have some wasps, we might have some ladybirds deciding to use this. Right, you could also okay. hang this from a tree as well, which we'll have a look at. Uh, so you so can also keep it on the ground. Right, um, okay. And we can also pop it um, in a tree. You could also make little ones of these and, and put them inside bigger bugger hotels as right. well. Oh, so right, okay. We are just going to have a look at how to make them first though. Right, so, so what do we need to do? Get your lovely trusty toilet roll tube yep. and cut them here. Um, I have the world's blunt scissors but they seem to be holding up alright today. So you're just cutting one incision to open it up like this and what this oh, is going to act as right. is this is really really easy it's just going to act as binding our twigs together. Right, so okay. that's it. So I'll to... give you those. Thank you. Um, and yeah so you have your so binding cover there. Way, all the way through yeah? All the way through just one cut. There we go. Okay, okay, so you should be able to sort of peel it open a bit. Yep. Um, so we're not doing it too much so it loses its shape, but just peeling it open. Right. And just get whatever twigs um, you want. Right, um, okay. So I've got, Mike's got some of the smaller ones there, so that's gonna um, probably be used for our, our smaller insects. These slightly bigger, drier ones, um, I'm just gonna pop in, and these might be all right for our bees and such like. Oh, yeah, okay. So are you cramming it all the way? In, up to the top at you. So yeah, so, so if they come out both ends, that doesn't matter. That's actually quite ideal because it gives our um, insects um, just some something to, to climb out up into rather right. than going straight into a bit of cardboard, which they're probably is not very natural to them. Um, so if you have them sticking out of both ends, that's absolutely fine. And you're just putting as many in as you want, sort of cramming it because, like we said, cardboard's not very natural. They're, they're more there for those condensed sticks, not so much getting into a tube of cardboard. Does it matter exactly, you know, if it's um, dry or wet leaves again, or is it again, it, so, yeah, it's, it's it gets a, different people, yeah. or different insects? Well? Again, I mean, if you want to create a range of these, um, that's fine. Like we said, the bigger, the bigger insects are not going to like the wetter environments. Um, that's why, you know, they're, they're staying up in trees and, and such like that. That's where oh, our okay. bees nests are. They try and keep themselves dry. They don't fly in the wet. Yeah. They don't deal very well in the wet. Whereas right. our smaller insects might like a bit of dampness. Our wood lice, for example, um, or you find them in damp places under logs, for example, are gonna really yeah. like having some, right. some wet vegetation. Okay. And actually this carvel is gonna insulate it and keep it either wet or dry as well right. more so. Okay. Um, so once you've done that, this is really easy. We yeah. are just gonna tie some string around it to keep it all together. Oh, okay. And this all is right. how easy it is. Um, we're going to do one where we're just going to tie it up yours and we're yep. going to that can be popped in a bug hotel or we can um, we can just leave it on the ground for example in your, in your right. garden you can make stacks of them okay. um, and this one we're going to tie up and then just hang from one of the trees as well and that's where our flying insects might get into it as well. Oh, brilliant um, okay so what do I need to do then? So you're going to get a length of string however long to go round it and tie you can tie whatever knot you want you're all scouts pick your favorite knot um, <laughs> we're just going to use well, a Well mine's a high women's hitch so you um, know I don't think it'll work on May, this. Maybe not, but I'm just going to cut a piece of string, like I said, well, blunt as scissors. There we okay, go. Okay, right. Doing a reef knot if anyone wants to get in there. And there we go. And that is a second easy bug hotel. This one, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to start this. is going to need two pieces of string. Oh, so right. So you're going to tie it up and then you're going to have one where one, it... One, exactly. Right, sort of okay. cradles it up. And that will suspend there so we can just hang that over a tree branch obviously if you want to tie it directly onto the branch but that will sort of swing around and you can imagine that just a little bit like a bird feeder um, but if you get it next to um, a tree on here like I said we might have some of our flying insects that come in and make that their home or stop there for a, for a break when they're flying or whatever. That's brilliant. So, okay, so that's flying bug insect and, and one for the ground. Brilliant, that's okay so that's that's these then so what's the last way to obviously do a, a bug hotel. The last one is um, we are going to use some other man-made materials to help us. Oh, um, right. We are going to um, we're going to use something that's pre-made. We're going to repurpose okay. um, something else. So are you doing a bit of the re reduce, reuse, recycle there, the reuse uh, part? Um, good for the environment. Exactly. <laughs> so we have a um, bird sort of um, 
feeder, if you like. Right. Um, that's a, it's a bit of a, a bit of a funny one. It's got lots of complex bits to it. But essentially, you could you could have a, a wooden box, for example. You can make one if you want. Achieve your DIY badge at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah. Look at so, this. Yeah, Two badges in one there. Um, so you could just make yourself a simple box or something. And okay. we are just gonna get our materials again um, and just essentially make it a bit like our first bug hotel by right. just stuffing stuff in there. Um, all right. But we're going to use a, a man-made container to keep it in. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Let's get on with that then. So, uh, what are we going to be doing for our last uh, book hotel then? So this one we're using a bit of man-made um, structure to help us here. Right. So this one um, we've got here. This is a piece of wood essentially that's been made um, specifically for birds. Um, it's an old bird feeder. Um, right. So you can use something like that. You can buy stuff like this very easily if you if you want to make something a bit more complex. So like I said, you okay. can make it, and right. it can be as simple as just a wooden box taking out those partitionings in there. You could just make a wooden box. You could get one, right. uh, an old jewelry box or something. Okay. Or something a bit more specific like this, which is perfect with all the different sections. Really? Brilliant. So, um, essentially, this is really easy. We've gone and gathered a load of different materials here. Um, so obviously, we've got our bark. Uh, we've got different sized twigs. We've got leaves. We've got moss. We've got uh, some smaller pine cones here. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could use grass. You could use anything. Anything that's around. Right. Um, essentially, we're just going to put them into their different partitions, and that's going to create a habitat um, where we've got loads of different creatures that are like in their uh, different right, spaces. Okay. So, for example, our damp moss here. Yeah. Um, we can stuff in a couple of these smaller ones here that's our wood lice and stuff we're going to like coming down here oh uh, right okay right um and then um pick something and, and pop them in wherever you feel oh, right, um, basically okay. um so our small our pine cones like that some of our um larger insects might like coming into that um right. likewise we'll put some twigs um, and just obviously snap anything off to fit in where it's meant to go and then put some leaves here at the top and just compressing it down nicely you really want it to stay put, really, don't you? you want to... Yeah, and this is going to be something that we're just going to leave somewhere safe, or you can even hang it up potentially. Um, and yeah, so lots of different, lots of different kinds of materials in there. And that was a very simple way of just going around and finding different materials. Um, to make a bug hotel that's a lot more complex and it has lots of different sections where our bugs can go um, but that's way number three that's uh, using something you might have made yourself and doing your DIY badge at the same time indeed or um, <laughs> something you may just have lying around that you want to repurpose that's brilliant oh great fantastic so we'd love to see what you guys create what type of book hotels you do whether it's uh, a natural one whether it's obviously with some toilet roll or whether it's something like this um, so don't forget to post them on social media cool thank you very much that's nice so last month you've either been outside you've been inside you've gone on adventures you've done whatever um, and this are the amazing photos that you guys tagged us in or sent us in last month here we go So we want to see what you guys get up to this month. Tag us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Hey! <laughs> it's part of the show where I usually challenge someone online. <laughs> and this one's a little bit different because um, I've actually got him there. Uh, so it is host v co-host. Last month, my co-host won me which means that my co-hosts are currently in the lead, but only by a little bit. Um, and we've been mixing it up, so we haven't been doing the same thing over and over. So this month is Scout Tennis. Because I lost, I have to choose first. Now, I have them obviously written on bits of paper, um, like sort of folded, so I can't remember what is what or where is where, um, but I am going with this one. Which is, <laughs> he's hoping that it isn't one of them. Oh, things you'd pack for a camp. So the idea of Scout Tennis is we go backwards and forwards saying things that are packed for camp, for example. And um, we obviously stop when 
either someone's repeated something that the other person has said or we spend longer than five seconds but the other person has to count if you don't count i will keep i will take as long as needed but you have to visually count you can't count in your head because that's kind of cheating and wrong okay yeah Perfect. all right so things packed for a camp the obvious that i've got in mind is waterproofs sleeping bag um a rucksack a tent uh pegs roll mat mallet uh, a plate pillow mug um cutlery a bowl um, um i'm gonna get the no i'm gonna teddy bear always take your teddy bear an axe okay do you take an axe and come yeah, okay we're chopping all right and, um uh, spare poles just in case uh, a lighter lighter oh um uh, matches uh, do, 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 do. Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Teddy bear. I did teddy no, bear. Did yes, I did. I did teddy bear. Oh. It's one of the things I took a teddy bear. Yes! I'm, I'm actually happy about that. <laughs> oh, great. It's 1 0, though. So, uh, this could be your redeeming. Wildlife. Wildlife. Okay. All right, Em. So, wildlife, you go first with wildlife. So, what are we meaning by wildlife here? I'm thinking anything animal-wise that's outdoors. So no you no plants, then? I wouldn't know. It's such a broad wildlife. subject, isn't it? Well, it's your topic that you've selected, so you pick the dimensions of where we end. Let's go. We'll be here forever, otherwise, won't okay. we? Let's do animals. Let's animals. Do animal, animals in the wild. Yeah. So it can't be like a guinea pig, because you don't see them running around the place. Okay. Okay. All right. Me. You go first. Okay, so from earlier, let's go ladybird. Oh, okay. Oh, um, crickets. A wood louse. Um, a rabbit. A mouse. Hedgehog. A rat. Um, sheep. Uh, a cow. Oh, um, owls. A uh, blackbird. Um, blue tit. A pigeon. A, a squirrel. That's good. Um, a snake. Um, a, um, an eagle in America. Because <laughs> I know we don't get them over here. A couple in Scotland, I think. Oh, do you? Know, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Elephant. Oh, oh a tiger. Uh, a rhinoceros. Um, a jaguar. Uh, an otter. A leopard. Uh, hedgehog. Oh, what did you say? Hedgehog? No, you yes, I did. Oh, this is not <laughs> going well today, is it? Yes. Fantastic. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Level pegging with my co host. Can I finally get another win? Um, to secure this year. Who knows? Find out next month. Yay! So, so that's the end of our show. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like the video, subscribe and click that bell down below and share it with anyone who might like to see it. And by participating you can get yourself one of these badges. Yay! Like this. <laughs> um, and a big thanks to our patrons who've helped us out throughout lockdown and beyond. Uh, they are Belinda, Mark Price, Heather Lewington, Marcus Coulson, uh, Percy Gallagher, Joseph Heller, Laura Driscoll Breen, Irving Willis, Martin Steers, Roger Thorne, Mark Wiseman, and Steve Way. I'm sure I haven't forgotten anyone. And if you got this far, then right at the bottom, comment Team Orange. And above all, be a little scoutadelic. Hey, bye! Hey! <laughs>